Okay, welcome back. We're going to show you today how to spin on the Thrifty Fox spinning wheel with the dowel in place. Um, we're going to start with this pretty red um, Suffolk wool that we have carded and colored. Mama needs red for her tapestry rug and so we need to spin this into a one-ply yarn. Um, we are going to move here to the spinning wheel. And this is the Thrifty Fox. It is made out of a bike wheel. Um, the bike wheel is a 23 inch in diameter. Um, you can see I have some red yarn already pulled out, ready to go. Um, pedal works from the two bars of wood on the back, which was actually an old ironing board leg that we cut. Um, this is all made out of brand new wood. Uh, you can do this out of scrap wood if you have enough pieces. Uh, you can go to Etsy and type in the Thrifty Fox Spinning Wheel. The planes will cost you about $15. Um, well worth the cost to get the plans. They are very well laid out, very well marked. There's no wondering, do I have the bolt in the right place? Um, the plans are absolutely superb, and for $15, you can't beat that. So, um, if you can't afford the $400 for an Ashford Kiwi, this is going to be your option. Now, I'm doing this video because this wheel right now is set as a spindle wheel. This piece right here is called the Whirl. This is a 6 to 1. For each time, this knot right here, which is my belt, each time this makes one complete circle, that wheel is going to make 6 turns. Um, it does spin a little bit slower and a little bit more consistent. Here's the dowel we're going to spin to, which you can see as you turn the, the whirl, it turns the spindle. Um, a lot of people who show um, spinning videos, some use a leader string, some do not. I suggest if you are starting, start with a leader string. This is a piece of store-bought yarn tied into a loop and then loop it on here to where it can slide so you can move your yarn back and forth as you start to fill this up. Um, if you hear the term mother of all, that is this bracket right here. This holds your whirl. If you have a bobbin spinning wheel, then your bobbin and your flyer go here instead. We will be modifying this wheel to take a bobbin and flyer in the coming months. And once that's done, then I'll redo and show you how to spin on a bobbin and flyer. Uh, but for today, we're going to use the spindle method. It does work. It's a great way to learn spinning, to get the concepts of spinning and be a little bit more consistent. So I'm going to set you down over here so I can show you how to get this done. First off, is you need to put a little piece of your wool inside this loop and bring it up a little bit. Now my suggestion before we do anything is always spin barefoot because you need to feel where the pedal is in relation to what you're doing. I've tried it with my shoe on. I don't spin as well without it. So put this together like this. Now I bring my leader string a little forward because I want to end here. And turn that wheel. You always want to spin clockwise. And turn this a few times and you'll see your wool is beginning to spin. See? Now at this point I want to pull out just a bit and you can see that spin See, it's running up the wool. That's the whole art of spinning. So tighten that up a bit, a bit more, excuse me. Now at this point, I like to push my leader string back a bit. Now if your wool breaks off like this, like mine just did, don't panic. Because as you're spinning, all you have to do is lay these two pieces of wool back on top of each other and keep spinning. The fibers will twist and connect and you'll never see where that thread broke. Let me get you in position here. Now when you start, 
when you start spinning, turn your wheel to get going. Turn, starting it by your foot, you can damage your wheel and therefore you will have to replace that. Now as you can see, it's coming up. Just keep pulling your... Now see all this? That's pretty tight. Now if you keep pulling at the other end, which you cannot see, if you keep pulling and working your hand up your string of wool, like here, you'll see that twist is writing itself up. And that's what you want it to do. Now when you have that under control, now see that's really good, you want to wind that onto the spindle, like so, until you get where you're ready to pick up again. You can go a little bit more. Now you do want to keep this compact because the closer you get to this end, the fuller your spindle. And when your spun thread starts coming down here, you're going to have to stop and take this off. Now this one is removable. You can take this dowel out and then put another one in and start on another color. Most of the time, I go ahead and put this to the, to the uh, knitting natter and turn it into a twist. And at times if I'm going to ply yarn, I will go ahead and put this into a ball right off the this, this spindle. But that's pretty much how this works. If you get any odd colors, Just go ahead and let them spin into your color because that will give you some variation. Here's where this is your final place to remove any vegetable matter. No idea who that is. And then you just keep winding up. Pour your wool out into a thin strand like this. Then you can back your wheel up. And that's pretty much it. And you keep going until you're full, until you're done. And that's how you spin on a spindle. Um, if you need something else or it's not clear for you, then uh, drop us a note. And I'll, uh, you know, if you're having a problem somewhere, I'll see if I can get that videotaped for you and help you out with the issue. Otherwise, uh, show, share your comments and uh, anything else that you've done that has helped you spin easier. And uh, other than that, thank you from Corner Covered.